Welcome to One Community Church this wonderful day as we come to the backside of July and as we enjoy our time together and to worship the living God. Today is a wonderful day for baptism is to be placed in our service for celebration and great joy and we're glad to have uh, this opportunity to worship around the Lord's uh, font uh, reminding us that uh, baptism is a very special time for the life of the church, for family, for these uh, young girls that will be coming for baptism. As we begin, also, you'll notice that uh, today is a day in which we'd like to welcome those of you, especially those of you that are here for the very first time. We don't want you to leave without feeling the wonderful hospitality of our church, and especially as you wander back toward the coffee pot there in the fellowship hall, there's a bag there for you, a hospitality gift, uh, just a token for you to take with you to remind you of your time with us. We hope you'll come and make this your regular place of worship. We have uh, wonderful services, uh, 1045 um, contemporary service, and then this uh, service at 11 is more traditional. And uh, we encourage you to come and find your niche. And of course, find us on the website. There's all kinds of things running through uh, the, uh, our church for events from women's um, activities um, to um, uh, having a, a breakfast club on every other Saturday thereabouts uh, with a study on prayer right now. And then also we look ahead to uh, in August, we'll be kicking back up our Wednesday Bible study on Wednesday around noontime. So all kinds of things will be unfolding and we're glad that you're here to help us bring that about and uh, to kick in and be a part of that. There are two announcements I didn't want to leave without uh, calling your attention to as they are fast approaching us. One is the uh, backpack ministry that the church is engaged in. Um, Backpack Blessing uh, is coming up uh, here on August the 6th, and that will be between the services. So around 1030 to 11, we'll be having a Backpack Blessing for all students going back to school. That's August the 6th, uh, around 1030, between our 1030 and 11 time. Bring your backpack, and we'll meet in the fellowship hall. Pastor Vaughn uh, is uh, will be doing uh, giving a blessing for the school year. We'll have sweet treats and home surprises uh, to to help you get off to a great start in the school year. And we encourage you to uh, come and uh, bring um, this and make this a wonderful time of back backpack. Say that real fast. Backpack <laughs> blessings. Also, uh, next Sunday is another special uh, event in our church in that uh, we kind of whoop it up on fifth Sundays, and we have one service where both, con uh, both our uh, 9.45 and our 11 o'clock group get together for one service at 11 o'clock, and then afterwards we gather around the tables together in the fellowship hall for a potluck. So you want to bring some of those uh, garden treats uh, out with you or one of your favorite desserts, and um, uh, with us uh, for next Sunday, uh, our uh, July the 30th gathering at 11 o'clock here in our chap uh, here here in the sanctuary, and then the fellowship hall to follow. Are there other announcements that catch your attention that I've omitted? Well, let's uh, begin to settle our hearts uh, as we come to worship, and uh, it is a delight and such a treat. Uh, for to hear our organ and uh, Carolyn Price is playing that for us today and you want to let her know of your appreciation. Uh, she usually sits in the very back with Jim. Jim's uh, sitting solo today holding the bench down with Greg uh, but we're glad that, um, uh, that Carolyn's playing our organ for us this day and as we lift up our hearts to these wonderful hymns of old as we uh, give thanks and worship to God. So let's still our hearts as we begin our worship now.
Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Mm, thank you, Carolyn. Join with me for our call to worship today as we read back and forth this wonderful call. We look at this world focusing on the pain and confusion, the fears and hatred which seem to abound. For what can we hope? We wait breathlessly for the goodness of creation to be made manifest in all the world. For this is the promise of God. God is always with us, guiding, rescuing, healing, restoring us. Get ready, dear friends. The promises of God are true. May God quiet our spirits and open our hearts bringing us hope and peace. Let us pray. O oh God, you are infinite, eternal, and unchangeable, glorious in holiness, full of love and compassion, abundant in grace and truth. Your works everywhere praise you, and your glory is revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior, Therefore, we praise you, blessed and holy Trinity, one God forever and ever. Amen. Join with me as we stand and sing our first hymn today, Holy, Holy, Holy. You may be seated.
Part of our ritual as a Reformed church is realizing that we're not perfect, and we need to come to God, and we need to confess. This is the covenant which I made with the house of Israel, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. I will forgive their evil deeds, and I will remember their sin no more. In penitence and in faith, let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Together. Merciful God, you pardon all who truly repent and turn to you. We humbly confess our sins and ask your mercy. We have not loved you with a pure heart, nor have we loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not done justice, loved kindness, or walked humbly with you, our God. Have mercy on us, O God, in your loving kindness. In your great compassion, cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Do not cast us from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. May the God of mercy, who forgives you all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. We turn to the reading of sacred scripture. Let us pray. O Lord our God, your word is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love, that we may be obedient to your will and live always for your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Our sacred scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, portions of chapter 13. Jesus told another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed a, a good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? When then did the weeds come from? Where then? An enemy has done this, he replied. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he said, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil, they will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I like to wonder why Jesus told some stories that he did. He really was a once upon a time kind of teacher. He always told stories. But a good teacher, you know, doesn't just walk up and dump the truth on the listeners. A good teacher starts where the listeners are, listens to their questions, and what is offered is some kind of response. Jesus lets his listeners hit the ball over the net, and he hits it back and lets them hit it back again. So how did he come to tell the story that we just heard? I like to imagine it like this. He's sitting on a hillside on a fine spring day. All around him are people, all people, young people, women and men, all kinds of ordinary folk who are here today to listen to what he says. And what he's saying is something like this. Trust the good news. The dominion of God is here among you now. Don't think it's way off somewhere far away. You can trust that the power of God is among you now. I doubt that, one man says. Jesus says, good, tell me why. Well, look around you, says the man. Look like the kingdom of God to you. But to me, it looks like the kingdom of corruption here. The empire's got its boot on our neck, and the church is a crock. The fat cats are calling all the shots as usual, and they're feeding off the poor. There is no justice. Where's the will of God? And a woman stands up. She says, last week my son died. I held him in my arms, and he suffered hard, and he died. He prayed. We prayed. But God didn't hear us. What do you mean, trust the good news of God's power? One other fellow raises his hand. Teacher, I tell you, I fall into dark moods at times. And when they, te- they come, I do things I don't want to do. I pray and sometimes I think I'm stronger. But then the shadow comes again. And I think it's all for nothing. What does it mean that I should trust the power of God here? Now... Jesus bows his head for a moment, then looks up across the fields, sees a farmer in the distance working the field. He says, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, a farmer decided to plant a field full of wheat, and he used very good seed when he planted. But on that very night, an enemy sneaked into the field and by moonlight scattered a different kind of seed. It was Darnell weed. And here Jesus notices that the farm folk in the crowds looked at each other and smiled. But since the city folk didn't get it, maybe he pauses to explain. Darnell, when it sprouts, looks just like wheat. But it's a weed, and it's toxic, and if you eat enough of the seeds, it will kill you. 
Well, soon the field hands come running to the farmer and says, Boss, didn't you plant pure seed? Then how come your field is growing a crop all mixed up with weeds, with the wheat? We better get busy chopping those weeds. But the farmer says, no, don't cut the weeds. Whereupon Jesus notices that all the farm folk are looking at each other and frowning because no farmer in his right mind would leave the weeds alone. That's right, says Jesus. This crazy farmer said, don't pull the weeds. And he told the field hands why. He said, how can you know how can you be sure which is the wheat and which is the weeds when, you look, when they look so much alike for now? And even if you're, you think you're sure, even if you know, the roots of the weeds and the roots of the wheat are all tangled up together. And I will not risk the loss of a single stalk of my good wheat. Let it all grow together till harvest time, and then we'll know what's what. We will take the weeds and we'll burn them. We'll take the wheat into the barn. Now, this is not one of Jesus' most popular stories. You can see why it doesn't rank up there with the Good Samaritan and the prodigal son. In all my years of preaching, no one has ever come to me and said, tell me the one about God is like a farmer who lets the weeds take over the field with the wheat. But Jesus said, that's what life is like. And we know it's true. The bad is all mixed up with the good. And God will not uproot the bad. Not yet. For God's business is growing the good. And the good right now is intertwined with the bad. The day will come when it's all sorted out. But for now... It's too soon. You and I don't live in the golden day of the harvest. We live in the long green season of the growing of the good that is rooted and intertwined with the bad. The question this parable doesn't answer Questions like, why does it have to be this way? And where does all this corruption and conflict and suffering come from? The question of the field, hands is a question we'd like to put to God. Did you or did you not plant a good world here? Then where did these thorny, lethal, ugly weeds come from. And you know, Jesus doesn't really explain it. He won't explain the mystery of evil. He leaves it in the dark of a mystery. He tells in his story of a shadowy enemy, which is at the very least to say that the world, the way it is, is not the world the way God dreamed it. That our disappointment with creation is God's disappointment too, that there are real forces of evil among us that not even God can prevent. The upshot of the story is that for now, we are stuck and God chooses to be stuck with the most ambiguous world untidy, impure, 
a mixed up mess of evil with the good. And God is opted not to clean it up. Not yet. God is a strangely unanxious farmer who decides to tolerate the conflict and abide with the ambiguities till the growing is done. The parable puts the question to us, can we trust such a God? Can God can trust such a field? Can we be patient with a God who is so patient till the day of reckoning comes? This is what it means. It means it is not our business to sort everything out. And it's not our business to wage an all-out war against the weeds, as if we could root out all the evil in the world. On this point, Jesus stood squarely against the predominant religious impulse of his day. And it's the dominant religious impulse of our day, the purity impulse, which in the end is always a prideful impulse. We understand where it comes from because something in us is rightly angry and troubled and threatened and grieved by everything wrong in the world and for that matter, everything wrong with us. So we want to lift up the battle cry and go running into the field with machetes in our hands to slash and to hack and to divide and to destroy. Jesus forbids us to go at life this way. You can't see, he says. You can't see how evil and good are intertwined. And you can't see the evil you do when you judge and attack as if you were God. Now, let's be clear that this story is not a call to be passive about the evils that we see. There are evils we clearly see in ourselves and in our systems that we can address and we had better be about it. Christ still calls us to repentance. That means I stop reserving and protecting a plot of weeds in the garden of my life. I stop cultivating them. I ask for every help against them. And I tend to the growing of working the good with God. In just the same way, we together are called to our corporate life to bear witness against the sowing of evil seed. We confront the enemy. We do, not do, we do all in our creative power to counterplant with the good stuff. But even in the struggle against evil, Jesus commands us to caution and to care and patience and a proper humility. Because we who think on some days that we understand so much, we're part of the unpure field too. And there are weeds coiled into our hearts and weeds wrapped across our vision. So we don't see as clearly as we think. And though there's evil around us aplenty, a much greater evil may come from our prideful, premature judgments against the world, against each other, against ourselves. Let me put it bluntly. We aren't here to be perfect. And we aren't here to make anybody or anything anywhere close to perfect. 
We are here to grow the good we can in a most imperfect field. And we have to acknowledge that for now, evil and good are all together under God. And so learn to trust ultimate outcomes to the sovereign patience of God and the sovereign purpose of God. I love the witness of the old Gothic cathedrals. People in the Middle Ages understood the contradictions. On the corners of those cathedrals, you know, they always carved figures of gargoyles and monsters so that as you come into worship, God, you had to look at the faces of evil that are everywhere and are on us too. A pretty large contrast to our antiseptic-looking worship centers Richard Rohr says, if you don't put the gargoyles on the corners of the temple, they will sneak up onto the altar instead. Which is to say, if we pretend that we can be pure, or our world can be pure, it's only going to get worse. We start by confessing that in the world and in the church and in every heart, the weeds of the wheat are all tangled up together. And they all belong in the light and under the rule of the sovereign Christ. If that's true, then one thing it means is that we must learn to be more patient with each other's faults. How weary God must grow at our pointing fingers at each other and our whining about each other and our grousing about each other. We look at our colleagues, our spouses, our friends, and we see the prickly weeds of behaviors and attitudes that we don't like. And we get upset. As if, there were new, as if that were news. Every human life is sowed with selfishness and sin. We should be getting used to that by now. Instead, we get angry when, we don't, when they don't change or won't let us change them, which we are happy to help them do never noticing that the very wrongs we abhor in them are all connected to the good we love in them. You might say their voices are like the undergrowth of their virtues. So it's infuriating, carelessness is all connected, so Let's take, so his infuriating carelessness is all connected with his wonderful generosity of spirit. And her tendency to be controlling is all wrapped around her wonderful strength of commitment. For now in this world, the wheat and the weeds, they're all connected. God isn't trying to fix them. God is trying to grow what is precious out of what is confused. And God loves the field. Can't be more patient with each other, can't we be? Yes. When God is so patient, some of us need also to be a little bit more patient with ourselves. Patient with ourselves. Please stop dreaming that you will ever lead a tidy life. And please stop wringing your hands and hanging your head over the profusion of imperfections that keep cropping up in your life and refuse to go away. God knows your life is an unpure field and God loves the field. 
and wants to grow the good you need from the bad, among the bad. That's the repentance you need. Repentance is not whipping your life around like a weed eater to the weeds. Repentance is when you stop trying to be God. And with humility, give the whole field to God and give yourself to God's long, patient cultivation of the good in you till it outgrows and overshadows the imperfect. And besides, haven't you noticed that from the imperfection of your life in the past, precisely there, God grew some of the best for you and for others out of that. Look back on the worst you ever did or the worst that was ever done to you. Do you not see from precisely there God is growing something gracious, sweet, and good? This is God's business, His very nature. I do not mean to make light of sin, your sin, for all the thorny evils that infect the ground of our being, but I do mean to point to the way of Christ with evil. I think of all the paintings I have seen of Jesus praying in agony on his last night in the Garden of Gethsemane, and all I wonder if you've noticed any painting of him in the Garden of Gethsemane, as I have, that in all those paintings there is somewhere beside him, on the ground, in the garden, a patch of thorns growing. And he doesn't curse them or attack them. He kneels among them. He prays among them to the keeper of the garden, the keeper of his life. And when they lead him out to die, they had placed on his head the thorns. He suffered them and bore them. He bore them as God bears them and teaches us to bear them until the day when God destroys them or causes even the thorns to burst out in bloom. As for now, as T.S. Eliot said, for us there is only the trying. The rest is not our business. Or as Teresa of Lisieux put it, if you are willing serenely to bear the trial of being displeasing to yourself, then you will be for Jesus a pleasant place of shelter. One day, God's going to have a harvest, and all the ambiguity will be over, all evil will be destroyed, every tear wiped away, and all that is good will be lifted and redeemed and set free for the harvest and the feast that is made to happen. Till then, we trust these unpure fields to the hands of Christ who can still walk among them and patiently grow them to a pleasant place of good shelter. Let us pray. God, please deliver us from prideful impatience in all its forms. Most of all, keep us from the sin of despair. Lift our tired eyes, our troubling eyes to your patient purpose with the world and with us. And please lead us further along the way with Christ who bears the thorns to you and is leading us to a new garden of resurrection. Amen.
we stand to sing of God's love and how he changes us. Would you stand? Our hymn today is, I love to tell the story. God has made the earth and has filled it with good things. Every good and perfect gift, we are told, comes down to us from the Father of light, with whom there is no shadow or threat of turning. May we offer to God's care the gifts with which we have been entrusted, that the mission of Christ may go forth from this place, that in all things God may be glorified. Let me encourage you to use our offering box at the uh, entrance of our sanctuary or place uh, your gift in an envelope uh, to our office here on Elm Street or go online and make a, a gift to form regular habits of giving. Let us pray. Accept, O oh Lord, the offerings this week as we seek to make of ourselves and our money and grant that we may ever work and pray to build a world of peace and joy and freedom, all that is good, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Right. We come to a time for baptism today. I'd like to ask Katie and I'd like to ask Riley to come up and Pastor Vaughn to come up, and Stacy and Kevin as well. All right. How about just standing right over here, okay? Very good. Oh, super. You all look so nice. Yeah, very good. Okay. Okay. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me, so therefore, 
uh, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Hear also these words from Holy Scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you are called obeying the word of our Lord Jesus and confident of his promises. We baptize the, those whom God has called, in baptism God claims us, and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. On behalf of the session, I present Katie and Riley to receive the sacrament of baptism. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Putting your whole trust in the grace and love of Jesus Christ, Katie and Riley, do you desire to be baptized? I do. I do. Yeah, very good. Okay. Will the members of session please stand? And those, uh, those uh, teachers here and staff people please stand. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help Katie and Riley to grow into the full stature of Christ? If so, say, I will. I will. Thank you. You may be seated. Members and congregation gathered here, do you, as members of the body of Christ Jesus, promise to guide and nurture Katie and Riley by word and deed with love and prayer? If so, say, we do. Will you encourage them to know and follow Christ and to be faithful members of this church? If so, say, we will. We will. I will say the profession of faith. Through the sacrament of baptism, we enter the covenant God established in Jesus Christ. Within his covenant, God gives us new life strengthens us to resist evil, and nurtures us in love. Through this covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. And Katie and Riley, I'm going to, I'm going to read a, a couple phrases, and after I read each one, you can say, I do, okay? Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn away from the ways of sin and renounce evil, and its power in the world. I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? I do. And for these next ones, it's a little longer. Your response will be, I will with God's help. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? I will, I will with God's help. Will you devote yourself to the church's teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the, the prayers? I will with God's help. Good job. Thank you. Would you stand? With the whole church, let us confess our faith from this old ancient statement of faith that was for early Christians, and we have used it to this day. Join with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the death. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. All right. We're going to put some water in here, okay? All right. Think that's enough? Yeah, okay. All right. All right. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ sets us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. From it we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Send your spirit to move over this water that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it. Raise them to new life and graft them to the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Katie and Riley that they may have power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you be all praise honor and glory through Jesus Christ our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. All right. Okay, Katie, step right up here, okay? I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you, okay? Very good. Riley? I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Very good. I'm not going to pour any more water on you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Laying on of hands and anointing. I'm going to put my hand on your heads, okay? Let's turn this way so I can see it. <laughs> Here you go. O oh Lord, uphold Katie and Riley by your Holy Spirit. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Both now and forever. Amen. Children of the covenant, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, who did a good work in you, will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. Katie and Riley, you have been received into the one holy Catholic and apostolic church through baptism. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you will become members of the household of God to share with us in the ministry of Christ and the priesthood of all believers. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you into the body of Christ. Alleluia and amen. God bless you, my sisters. <laughs> amen. Live as a child of the light, and let your, shine, your light shine before others. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. 
and also so with, with you. you. Very good. Amen. Do we have a song we could sing on the way? Wonderful words of life. Yes. Let us sing. Let us stand. Stand and sing. Thank you. You may be seated. All right. Y'all can, we're going to have a little blessing and make our way out. And I want you all to join me, okay? All right. Come over here and stand with me and chaplain, Pastor Vaughn. There we go. Awesome. Oh, it's been a good day today to gather in the house of the Lord. Wonderful music and good family and friends. And as we join uh, our newest uh, uh, members and celebrate their, their entry into uh, this important uh, stage of life of making their promise to uh, receive Jesus and baptism. This has been a grand day. As we make our way out, let us hold each other in our hearts and minds, and especially those who are having difficult times in their lives, we pray with them together. And we lift up our concerns for those, O oh God, who are celebrating as well, that our hearts would join with them and we would have the happy joy of their joy in us. We share the love of Christ as we leave now. We want to thank those of you who have joined us on uh, the TV, on the YouTube, or through our website. We encourage you to spread the good news that wonderful things of life are happening here at One Community Church. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll spread the good news of where to find us on the internet. <laughs>